I S U P K. Hey, Shalom, man. This is Priest Kevin Gondoha with the I S U P K. And the Commander Johnny Yahana in California, man. Telling all blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians. Subscribe to this channel, man. You want true salvation? You gotta learn from the priests and prophets of the I S U P K, man. Subscribe to that channel. Hit that button, man. And it's there with that. Shalom. All I ever wanted was to be a gangster. Little did I know I wasn't danger. Decisions that I made provoked the Lord's anger Prayed to him all the time, but I was just a stranger All I ever wanted was to be a gangster Little did I know I was in danger Decisions that I made provoked the Lord's anger Prayed to him all the time, but I was just a stranger All I wanted was to be a gangster And shot call To be known with them niggas letting shots off Either that or the right hand to the top door Funny how we see vanity and not the lives lost Can't be focused on a life that's hopeless Out there pumping, not knowing the Lord will kill you for that hocus pocus Used to roll with niggas that cook dope with weaponry Same ones claim they love you, I had your life in jeopardy And I know my mother won't success for me But that G should take a girl straight to ecstasy you like Christianity right now, I'm giving you two seconds to leave the corner, man. You love the white man, I'm giving you two seconds to leave. You understand? Because what I've seen in America is that black men, they go in gangs to look for safety, to look for some form of fatherhood, and they're not safe in any gang they go in. You understand? They're not safe. You got parents who took their kids and send them to church, send them to, send them to Bible study, and they are not safe in the churches. You know where you safe, black man? You know where you're gonna be safe? In the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge. You wanna come get a flyer. After, after we get through what we say here in this Bible, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indian, you're gonna see the only safe place it's in the Israelite School of the Universal Practical Knowledge, man. That's right. Give me, give me first, second Peters, one and sixteen, man. You see the mess that happened the, um, two days ago. You understand? With with Amber, with Amber Geiger getting ten years for murder. Five years, sir. Five. You understand? Ten years for first degree murder. When will you ever hear that in America, man? She only have to do five. You understand? You're right. I, if she do five, I'll be shocked. You understand? You have to do five. She, I'm gonna be shocked. Christianity is to blame for black people being killed in the streets of America, man. It is to be blamed. It makes us too docile in America, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indian. You got it? Now, 2 Peter 1 and 16. I'm going to show you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indian. Oh, this Bible that is against God to follow after Christianity, man. Read. This is 2 Peter chapter 1 and 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. We have not followed what? Cunningly devised fable. Christianity is a cunningly devised fable, man. You understand? Now picture this black Spanish and Native Indian. Our four, our brothers and sisters get shot down in the street, get murdered in the street. But black people, because of Christianity, we want to forgive our murderers. When, when the so-called oppressor, when the so-called left nationalist when their people get shot down in the street, do they go ask for forgiveness or do they go get justice? Look at what happened to the World Trade Center with Osama Bin Laden. Did America forgive Osama Bin Laden? Did America go and hug and kiss Osama Bin Laden? What about Saddam Hussein? They caught Saddam Hussein. Did they go hug and kiss Saddam Hussein? Saddam Hussein met the end of a noose. You understand? He met his capital punishment for the crimes he committed. But the so-called oppressor in America, he don't want to pay for none of his crimes. He want black people just to turn a left eye, man. Turn a blind eye to his crimes. And I blame Christianity, man, for that, man. Read. 
where we may know that through the power and coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, but we're witnesses of his majesty. You understand? Like, this Bible here is the truth, man. And when you read this Bible, you're going to see that loving, loving your oppressor is anti-Christ, man. Forgiving your oppressor is anti-Christ. That's what it is, blacks, Spanish, and native Indian. But if Bolton knew that, he would have been alive today. You understand? He would have been alive today. But when you want to be around white people, uh, uh, around your oppressor, you understand? You're going to drop your guard when your guard should always be up when he's around. You understand? Your guard should always be up when he's around. We want to drop our guard. Why? Because of Christianity. Christianity teaches us that we have to love and forgive our oppressor. When the white, when the so-called oppressor, he doesn't use Christianity like that. If the oppressor is hurt, if someone hurt the oppressor, he goes get justice. He goes and get justice. He believed from reading this Bible that it is, it is God given right to go get justice when someone does him something. When someone harm one of his family members. He believes it's God given right. But somewhere in the black community, somewhere in the Hispanic community, Christianity teaches you to forgive your oppressor, to forgive your murderer. You understand? Give me, tell me to, um, tell me to Mark. Thank you, sister. Tell me to Mark 7 and 26. I'm going to show you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indian. It's anti-Christ to go and hug and kiss your oppressor, man. I'm a guy that is a murderer, and she should be treated like a murderer. You understand? He should be treated, she should be treated like a murderer. You understand? You know how much, how much black, innocent brothers been put in the prison system? Ain't nobody feeling sorry for them. Ain't nobody crying out for black people who are innocent and been put in the seven sentence for 30 years. Innocently, man. You understand? Read. This is Luke chapter 7 and 26. The woman was a Greek, a Seraphonician by nation. The woman was a what? A Greek, Seraphonician by nation. Uh, this woman. That's walking up to Christ right now, thank you. That walking up to Christ right now. She is a white woman. She is a white woman. Black, Hispanic, and Native Indian. This is a white woman. Read. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. And she begged Christ. She begged this black man to cast the demon out of her daughter. She begged him. Read. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled. But what did Christ say to her? Let the children first be filled. Did Christ hug her? Let the children first be filled. Did Christ rub her head? Let the children first be filled. Christ said, let the children first be fed. You understand, black man? The love we got back here. We can only give it to blacks, Hispanics, and Native That's Indians. Right. We right. can't share it. You understand? We don't share our love with murderers right. on the face of the earth. Our oppressor is a murderous nation. And you going to tell me we're going to just forgive them? You understand? Go to Isaiah 14 and, and what, 21. You understand? Hold where you at and go to Isaiah 14 and 21. We gonna just forgive them? We gonna hug and kiss a murderer in court? You understand? The judge went and hugged this woman to show you how destroyed we are. And she had the nerve, right gentlemen, and she had the nerve to go and give that white woman your Bible, your history book, that murderer, that sinner. Your Bible, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indian. How the hell 
Christianity make you drop your God so much, man? You and your, just imagine this. You and your home, eating ice cream. You're more likely in your vest, in a boxes on. As a white woman come into your, into your house, and you just, I don't know, laid back. You can go get a kitchen knife, nothing, why? Because we drop our God around our oppressor because of Christianity. Because of these religions out here, we drop our God. Christianity teaches us to love our oppressor, and that is anti-Christ. That is against Christ. Read. This is Isaiah 14 and 21. Prepare slaughter. What? Prepare slaughter. God is saying in the Bible, prepare what? Prepare slaughter. Prepare slaughter, man. How do you prepare slaughter according to this Bible? Black man, you stop celebrating Christmas. You stop eating pork, crab, shrimp, and lobster. You start obeying God. You start not hugging and kissing your, your murderous oppressor. That's how you prepare slaughter, man. Read. For his children, for the iniquity of their fathers. For what? For the iniquity of their fathers. For the what? For the iniquity of their fathers. Go back to that part, man. For, for, for the children. Because Abba Geiger is a child of murderers. Of iniquity. You understand? She just did what her forefathers did. And got a slap on the wrist. Ten years is a slap on the wrist. That's a slap on the wrist. You understand? I pray God get her hooked on those opioids like her fellow, like her fellow brothers and sisters are. That's what I pray. I don't want to see no brother go hug a murderer, an oppressor, a child of the oppressor. You know what you're telling God? Free. Prepare slaughter for his children. Prepare slaughter for who? For his children. For Amber Geiger. For his children. You understand? For Dylan Roof. For his children. You understand? God wants the blood of the white man. You want to hug and kiss. You want to, you try to stand in the way of God. God gonna move you away very easily, blacks and Spanish and native Indian. He gonna move us away very easily. You understand? God is not to play with blacks and Spanish and native Indian. Read. For the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the faces of the world with cities. You understand? God do not want your oppressor to rise. Because when your oppressor rise, blacks and Spanish and native million, we as black people, we can judge between good and bad because of our oppressor. Let us noise pass. Let us noise pass. You understand? We can judge between good and bad because of Christianity. Christianity teaches us to accept the bad, to accept murderers. That's what Christianity tells us to do, man. Accept your oppressor. That's why I always ask a Christian. I ask a Christian, what's your motive in accepting Christianity? What's your motive? To live peacefully? Don't ask the white man or, or the oppressor why he accepts Christianity. And he's going to show you why he rules the earth. There's two total, totally different Christianity that's going on right now in these churches. You understand? The, the so-called oppressor, his churches, his Christianity teaches him that his God-given right to get justice. Us, our Christianity teaches us to hug and kiss a murderer to beg for forgiveness for a murderer. You hate your dear brother, man. You hate your sister, man. When you do, when you, when you do acts like that, you show God that you hate your people, blacks, his smallest and native Indian. Trying to find 
something to follow Had loyalty, every man tried to borrow Felt pain and a lot of sorrow Got betrayed so packed, I didn't even have my heart broke Living confused, about to lose hope Cops got me on the side of the road Like a sideshow, need an antidote before I croak Now I'm setting fire to rhythm man blues Call this guitar smoke Rebel with no cause, trying to find direction The world got me vexed Picked up a bad lick of habit that's hereditary from oppression Felt like my life was on fire trying to find an exit Now look, 10 G's plus a good wreck Sometimes a follower is a soldier Trying to find a good shepherd Plus when you in hell, how do you excel? Wisdom the breath of life, I don't believe in fairy tale. Listen well to what I tell No calling can cause pain Something that a rebel knows very well can't you tell I was sent from the Lord? Got a tongue like a two-edged sword.